Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tenno Markova, and in today's video, I'm gonna be fixing my camera. So, in today's video, I'm speaking about Linus and Taurus. Um, just before I begin, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much to all my new subscribers. I'm very, very grateful for you guys. Please make sure to check out my other YouTube, my other YouTube channel, Avocado Man, where I do other things that are not astrology. If you would like a birth chart reading from me, hit me up on my Instagram below. That will be linked down below. Yeah. Anyway, um, so getting into Venus and Taurus. So Venus and Taurus people. Okay, let's like talk about the basic archetype of what Taurus is, right? Let me just lower this. So Taurus is a fixed earth sign, right? It's birthed from the second house constellation. So the second house is our possessions, you know, things that we value, things that are like tangible to us that we can physically touch, see, taste, hear, and smell that we have, that we value. So it's really just the house of your value system. So that could also be money. You know, depending on whatever um, sign is in your second house, that's things that you're going to value and things that you see as tangible and things that you feel that you can offer to the world, you know. So we have the second house and then we have earth because er like the earth that we live in, that's the Taurus rules that should be. Virgo's exalted in it. Um, so it's earth and then it co and then co-ruled by Venus, right? So what they love and appreciate is tangible things. Right, so it's like the earth, they're ruled by physicality because they are an earth sign. So it's like a double emphasis on just the earth energy. Cause like, and that's what makes them even more like, never mind, like adding to the fact that they're a fixed earth sign, right? And that they're ruled by earth and that they're like the daytime, AKA the earth time of Venus. That's a lot of fucking earth. Like, and do you see, like that shit is a lot. There's a lot of fucking earth. I feel like Taurus is probably the most earthy out of all the earth signs. Then Capricorn, then Virgo, because Virgo is a lot more movable, you know. I mean, all of them are earth signs, but let's just say, like, who's the most fixated? <laughs> Who's the most earthy out of all of them? It's definitely Taurus and then Capricorn. Because, I mean, then Capricorn can also... Anyway, we're not talking about that. Um, but, like, Taurus is just like... With the fixed... With the fixed... Because um, they're a fixed earth sign, right? So, it's like they're fixed and they're fixated. And they're fixated on their own way of being practical. And their own... Um, their own way of loving their practicality and loving and appreciating, compromising with their own practicality, you know? So this is not like Venus, where it's like they're initiating the love of communication and including everybody and building a foundation on that. The Taurus aspect is more so like um, finding what works, loving and appreciating what works, and then building on what works, you know? Obviously there may be like a few changes, like sudden changes, Maybe once every year, maybe twice every two, like twice every two, you know, shit like that. Twice every, I don't know, t twice every year, there's like, it might be a sudden change. Shit like, you know, like, it, but it's always going to be a, a consistent thing. Because like when I think of Tauruses, I mean, they are like the earth itself. And the earth doesn't really, like the globe and just the shape. Let me not say the shape of the earth. Let me rather say like the... The consistency of Earth always providing and Earth always having like solid rocks and concretes and like boulders and, you know, just the Earth being Earth itself, you know, that won't change unless we have like fucking earthquakes and, you know, shit like that that we never expect. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, Earth is like usually just stable. Just think of like the floor that you walk on. Just the ground that we walk on, that is Taurus. You know, it doesn't move unless like there's an earthquake or some shit, which I said would always happen just like suddenly. But for the most part, it doesn't move. <laughs> it just doesn't fucking move, you know. So we add that with Venus and it's loving and appreciating the stability of everything that you have. Whether it be like the friends that you have, you know, the favorite things that you like to do. 
whether it be music. This is like, Taurus is like one of the very few people that like would listen to a song, one song for a year and love and appreciate that one song, one album, an artist for like 10 years, like their, their whole life really, you know? Cause it's like they build a foundation and a like stable foundation on everything that they love and appreciate. And they like to build on that. You know, and nurture that because of that sextile they have with um, cancer, but also because they're exalted in the moon too. So it's like they like to manifest things that are very solid. They like they, they like to manifest things that they that make them feel comfortable. And this is what Taurus, the Sun, Moon, and Ascending just and Ascending this just do. Period. Mercury's they just may think about these things, and this is how they pract like logically practicalize their thoughts. But it's not so much on uh, their actions or their personality or what they're responding and reacting to, a.k.a. the moon sign, you know. But in Venus, because it's in Venus, it's home here, right? This is where a Tor Venus and Taurus and Venus and Libra, this is like their home. This is like, you know, when you're at home, you're just chilling, there's food, um, there's like TV, your clothes. The Taurus, like the, the Libra aspect of it would be like... Um, Actually, no, let's not talk about the Libra aspect. Like, the Taurus the Taurus aspect of Venus would be, like, you know, your own room. Things in your room. Like, just think about everything that you have in your room that you love and appreciate. You know, like, your clothes, your shoes, you have your phone, your music. You have fairy lights, if you have fairy lights. Um, your bags, accessories, um, books that you like to read. Um, your favorite blankets, pillows, favorite shows. Fucking, you know, everything that makes you feel comfortable just think of your room that's i feel like your room just really just kind of explains the taurus energy generally but if you added in the venus aspect this is what you love and appreciate like this is your love language you know you love and appreciate the physical tangible things of life you know you love and appreciate the comforts of life it's just the issue with this is that you can be so fixated on your comforts and because you're like very slow to move it can be even difficult for you to move because you're like, you, it's like, once you get comfortable with something, it can be very difficult for you to get out of that situation. So just think about like spending days in your room doing nothing just because your room is super comfortable. Like you can, I mean, the only time you get out is to get food and then shower, maybe clean your bed, your, your, your sheets because you want them to smell good again. And then you just like chill in your room. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of just explains the Taurus energy. And just take that analogy with everything in life, you know, whether it be friends or partners, like people that you date, music that you listen to, um, thoughts that you like to think, fucking habits, you know, if you like smoking weed a lot and you get comfortable with that and then you start loving and appreciating that because it is a tangible thing that you can see, touch, taste, you know, it's like earthy shit, right? Obviously weed is like earthy shit, but like... Food also, you know, if you're comfortable with just like the ta like tasting food, you know, that's part of your comfort levels. And like I said, Taurus is exalted in the moon sign, in like the moon. And the moon, we know, is what makes us feel comfortable. So if Taurus is there, it's like, oh, I can literally bring down physically, I can be the physical representation of a good feeling. Do you know what I'm saying? Just think about like the good feelings you have. Tauruses can like wield that shit down and make it concrete. Or they attach those things to like tangible things. So whether it be like music or pillows, like I said, you know, your bed, whatever. You know, they just know how to like attribute or attach specific feelings. Even though they they may not be a feeling person. Like because earth signs, not to say they're not in, like unemotional. You know what I'm saying? But they're just like... How do I say this? Like the earth signs and the air signs kind of... it How they f like feel things, it's always going to hit their mentality first. And then it's going to sink down into their emotion. You know, whereas like the fire signs and the water signs, they're going to feel something first. And then after feeling about it, then only after they've dealt with the emotion, the emotional part of something, then they're like think about it after so that's why like a lot of fire signs they may act first and then think about it later you know because it's always on impulse i mean water signs they'll like react to it first 
in terms of emotionally and then they'll think about it later I'm like oh shit maybe I shouldn't have done that because you didn't mean it that way but it's always like I said it's always going to hit the, the the emotions first whereas the earth signs you may say something to them say say something to them and the earth, the air signs or do something to them then they're going to sit back think about it logically analyze it like and then if it like really hurts then it's going to sink down to the emotions and then that's when they start like you know, getting into their feelings, but it's it's, it's going to work differently for every sign, obviously. But for Tauruses, like I said, it's going to hit their mentality first. So when a Taurus feels, because like whatever, like in Venus, what they love and appreciate is comfort and like just tangible things, you know? And what I said about them, like knowing how to bring down things that feel good in terms of emotions, like, just think about all the good emotions. Like, they know how to attribute that, as I said, with, like, actual physical things. So, this is how they show love to people in general, you know? Like, if they love you, they're going to give you... And once again, because of their second house, it's, like, your possessions and actual things that are tangible. So, if they love you, or how they show they love you, is by giving you things. But those things, they're, they're, it's, like, they're attaching feelings to it. So it's like when they give you, you know how like an, like a cancer will make you feel good just being around them. Like they'll make you laugh and all of that shit. A Taurus will, how they, it's like they're doing similar things as cancer. Only they're not making you feel those things with emotions. They're doing it with physical things. Do you get what I'm saying? I know Venus and Taurus people, they get me. Like they're doing that thing with physical things. Even though like obviously, I mean, they may not be as emotionally expressive or even responsive as a cancer would be or as a pisces would be or the upper sign a scorpio would be you know but they understand those things they just may not react to emotions the same way as a cancer would be even though they are exalted in the moon that exaltation is really just about like knowing how to solidify comfortability you know what i'm saying and they know how to like bring the venus part of it the love and appreciation because you're always going to feel the love and appreciation part of it just the same as you would with libras and with pisces because pisces is exalted in um venus you know but you're always going to feel like you're always going to and they always want like when a venus and taurus person shows you love they always, you're always going to feel it because it's always gonna like you're always going to catch the venusian part of it you know so whether it be a hug because they are physical people you know what I'm saying? So I feel like they show their love with their physical body. And that's why they are so sensual, you know, because of that Venusian, that Venusian part as well. And because they're an earth sign. So how they show love, like I said, with tangible things. And because our body is also tangible, they give you, it's like they can give you themselves in a way. You know, so sometimes like a Scorpio, the opposite sign, they may give you parts of their soul. And that's how they show they love you. A Taurus gives you like their body and they if you start dating them or you're their friend the same way your pillow is yours you are theirs now like you are their friend or you just belong to their existence and now which could be a bad thing because it's also like you know the same way you can throw away a blanket because it's dirty or you don't want it anymore you don't like it Tauruses can do that to people which is like not nice for the people who are the ones being thrown away uh, obviously every Taurus has a reason but I feel like when you're young especially the like guys especially dudes because I feel like with obviously women there's always going to be more of like a more of an emotional attachment obviously it would depend on the situation of what's going on and what happened but for the most part Taurus is like I feel like the negative side of Taurus is of Venus and Taurus generate like Taurus energy having this placement like you because you see people or you just naturally view everything human beings friends lovers as your possessions the same way you view your phone as a possession like once your phone is broken you may just be like oh fuck let me just get a new one and also be like oh this human being isn't doing what i want them to do fuck let me get a new one <laughs> You know, but obviously you do, like, I mean, if you think about phones like that, you can obviously get your phone fixed. And as I say, Taurus, Venus people would want to fix people. It's just to say, like, if they don't, if the person they're with doesn't behave in, in I guess, 
ways that the tourist person feels comfortable in or doesn't feel like they resonate with that energy they may like just start to get really dry or like slowly but surely just try to like get away from you or like just slowly but surely get rid of you you know slowly but surely just like replace you <laughs> and it's kind of gonna sting too obviously because the opposite sign is Scorpio it's gonna fucking suck you know but I mean it's always gonna be and I feel like with horses because also like the they're logical like let's say you and a Venus and Taurus person argued and you probably spoke about like or I don't know there was some kind of animosity or if if there wasn't any animosity like you just kind of stop being friends or you're not in each other's lives like that anymore like they'll still be they'll still come to you on some nice shit kind of like libras you know what i'm saying like they'll you guys could not be friends but if you guys for example are at a party together or you guys meet each other at spa like the a venus and taurus person is going to be dry but they're still going to like if you ask them for help they would still help you and you would still maybe catch the influence or catch the feeling like oh maybe this venus and taurus person still likes me or they're still cool with me and it may not be that it's just you're always gonna feel like the venusian part of it because venus is there you know and earth is there too and earth is the provider obviously so they're always willing to provide love tangible love to you so that could be in the form of help you know but if it's not a situation where you guys have like called it quits on your um on your relationship like they're gonna treat you they may have this thing where like they want you when they want you and then when they don't want you they just don't want you to bother them kind of like aquarius is also where it's like when they're with you it's like they have their own schedule and they won't let you know like okay this is I mean, obviously you will get maybe some venus and tauruses who have a libra influence maybe or a, a, a gemini influence perhaps like a gemini mercury who maybe a lot more willing to communicate about everything that they're thinking maybe you know but for the most part like because venus and tauruses don't really as practical as they are just the clock that they work under or on isn't the same clock as everybody else's you know and it could be frustrating for the people around them because like i said like a taurus operates the way that they want to like i said just like an aquarius um and a scorpio too but i'd say i'm also an aquarius because aquariuses also do that thing where like if they don't really want your attention then they're gonna like clock out and if you bother them then they're gonna be very mad but see the thing is is with an aquarius they'll they'll be like sarcastic and like very direct and be mean about it and like kind of hurt your feelings a taurus is just gonna be dry and like it's just gonna be blank, like a blank face, like nothing. They're just gonna look at you and ignore you. Literally, they're gonna fucking ignore you. And you do get like Venus and Tauruses if they have like a Sun in Taurus, where they can like also switch and be pissed off if you bother them or if you're like kind of probing in their quality time. You know, that's why I feel like Venus and Tauruses, like I said. Whenever they want something, they want it in a specific way, but they may not communicate exactly what it is they want. So they may feel like other people should have the common sense to figure it out, you know? Because, I mean, a Taurus will do what they want you to do in action, but they may not talk about it. But see, you may be with, like, a Libra, a Gemini, an Aquarius who wants you to communicate because that's their form of, like, understanding shit, you know? And I feel like communication is key. But for Venus and Taurus, it may be kind of like, for them, just like Cancers, they may, it's like, they're going to show you with their actions what they want and what they don't want. But they want you to read between the lines, you know? So you may be dating a Venus and Taurus person, and you guys have been talking for like, how, like I don't know, a week or something, or a month, and then for a week, they just don't talk to you. They kind of go, it's not like an Aquarius where they... Let me just say they ghost, because I feel like Venus and Tauruses can definitely ghost. You know, whether they're busy or whatever, you know? And they'll expect the next person to just kind of be understanding to it, you know? But you may be with a Leo. Or an Aries. 
<laughs> or Libra, or like any um fucking air sign except Aquarius that needs you to tell them, okay, dude, listen, I just need some time alone. Don't bother me, you know. And like when people do that, when those signs do that to you, and they like want your attention, like they want you to like you know communicate with them, then you get irritated. And then you get like snappy and like you just kind of explode and it's like what the fuck or you just kind of get super dry and it's like really hard to read you because you just become a brick wall and it's like dude what the fuck like i'm just here to like i want your love what the fuck and you may not be in the proper space to give love because either i don't know you're going through whatever you know, and I'm going to talk about, like, Venus and Taurus is, like, because they are Earth. Just think about how much the Earth goes through. And how much the Earth just provides, no matter how much shit it goes through. So I also feel like Venus and Taurus is, like, they're, because they're so stable, they may come from homes where it may be, like, very chaotic, you know. And that Venus and Taurus person learned from their childhood or a parent that, yo, do you, you when you grow up you're gonna have to be the man of the house or you know the woman of the house and you're gonna have to learn to take care of people and kind of put your emotions aside and fix things you know like crying isn't gonna help you know they may they may have taught you like crying isn't gonna help in your life you have to figure it out and save that shit for later and that can be really heavy because thinking about like having to be strong or be like stable for everybody else around you because everybody else around you doesn't have the stability that you have in order like in terms of taking care of situations or taking care of business or like I don't know just being the helper of the family that's a lot that's like a lot you know and it's like a lot of pressure and I feel like maybe in those instances like or in those weeks where you just kind of disappear and go or like just don't answer your phone or whatever i feel like those moments you just kind of need a break from life because i feel like life can be really heavy for you guys you know especially if you have like this somehow can like um if you have your venus in taurus with aspects to pluto like if it's sextiling pluto so if you have like a virgo pluto which is like i don't know my dad's age or Capricorn, Pluto. Yeah, if you have like a Pluto and Capricorn, also would apply, you know, because that's like the sextile with your Venus and Taurus. But for the most part, if it's like aspect, even with your Mars too, you know, it can be like really harsh on you to, you can, like you would also be like one of those Venus and Tauruses that give tough love. It's like you, you still have the, the love and appreciation of buying people things, but you're always the Venus and Taurus that's like talking shit or telling people around you, yo, dude, get your shit together. I can't always be the one that's, like, looking back to see if you're okay, if you're doing good, or if you, like, build your foundation or your building blocks, okay? Because I also have my own shit to figure out, and my shit is uh, probably a lot more than what you have to handle, you know? Because I also feel like with having this placement, just having Taurus energy generally, like, you could be, like, a lot of, either A, a lot could be put on your shoulders, you know? Just because you have, like, the the intuition, which is the exaltation of the moon, but also the practicality to kind of see a situation or, like, kind of help a situation both logically and in a way that, like, makes sense, but also in a way that's, like, always bringing comfort to people, your family members or people that you're around, your friends, you know? So you may be the one... And because Taurus are manifestors, right... Like, you could be with, you could have a group of friends that, like, have a, have an idea or whatever. And because you as a Taurus, you're very good at planning and, like, kind of like Capricorn too, where you, like, know how to build a blueprint of something. And, like, because you know how to manifest it and you know how to work behind the scenes of something, aka that moon exaltation, you know how to, like, build also the, the, I guess, the emotional, not emotional, let me, like, the, the, the moon part of the manifestation um, to wield something down, like to wield a business plan down or like a, I don't know, a party plan or whatever plan, like had a girlfriend, a boyfriend, you know how to wield that shit down. You know, how, like the proper steps to take as slow as it may be. You just know the proper steps to take to like manifest something 
and like be stable on it and like you know be consistent on it people know that from you and they sense that from you especially if you have like cancers around you not so much virgos not so much capricorns because they share that trying with you but just you having that shit with the moon like you just know how to wheel things down and like just the energy that you exude is like a tree you know what i'm saying you're like a fucking tree like obviously trees are stubborn trees are unmoving trees don't change they grow but like nah, they change but they don't really change like their roots are in one place you know what i'm saying but just for that fact also because you are a tree everybody can like kind of take from you and you're always there to provide and then like sometimes when you get older you just become like a really angry taurus or like those really nasty tauruses but because venus is still there you're still going to be the taurus that like you're talking shit to somebody but you buy them food you know my dad is a taurus moon and i remember when i was younger he used to like yell at me but then after he would like get me food you know or he'd take me for ice cream or some shit like that you're always gonna it's always gonna be like talk shit talk shit talk shit Talk shit while I'm buying you food. <laughs> Talk shit while I'm buying you things that you want, you know? I guess it all comes from a place of love. I don't know. I, I don't know. It does depend. But I just feel like you having so much... Or you may feel like you just carry the weight of, your, of the world on your shoulders. And it can be really exhausting. Because at the same time, you may feel like this is what you meant to do. Like, you may, that you may have made... You, you may have had people in your life that made you feel like yeah your role in life is to just always help all the time and kind of put other people's things first before you you know so these like i feel like Venus and Tauruses would also just kind of go broke for people even in relationships you know because i know like Taurus is like their love language is getting new things you know massaging you just tending to the physicalities of life so money your body sensuality things you know, they may not be like Venus and Libra's where it's like more so on the words of affirmations and like relating to you on a let's communicate and share mind, you know, not like that. But it's more so like, I mean, they don't mind that. But at the same time, it's always going to be like they like how they're going to show you they love you through their actions of giving you tangible results, you know. And sure, we can talk about it, but at the end of the day, they want you to show them your love, regardless of whatever, you know? So if you're going to tell a Venus and Taurus, like, yo, I want you, like, I'm going to cook you a meal one day. I'm going to cook you a meal one day. They're going to hold you to it, you know, because they want you to show them. And then obviously, eventually they'll realize if you may be around a Libra who just likes to talk just for a good conversation or a Gemini just for a good conversation, they may realize, oh, okay. Then they'll know how to treat you or they know like kind of where you stand with them you know but for the most part like if you're not showing them and you're just talking a lot it's be like oh they may not take you seriously like but you're always gonna get the sense being around them that like you know there's always love there they always these are definitely the type of people like you could have really fucked them over but if you're in serious trouble and you call them like, dude, I need you to Uber me here. Dude, I'm in, like, I'm in fucking shit right now. I need you to help me get myself out of this. They're going to make a plan for you. They may like on the way fetch you and they be like, what the fuck were you doing? You're so stupid. But they're helping you. You know what I'm saying? It won't be like a, a Capricorn who will be like, what? What the fuck? Hang out just leave you like that you know or an Aquarius who would be like <laughs> but like they'll be sarcastic about it like you're stuck why did you get stuck oh right but I know you are stupid you know what just call me when you're not stupid anymore and they hang up <laughs> no help at all or Pisces who probably won't even answer their phone because they're unreliable you know, Gemini also unreliable. Cat, I mean, Libras can also be really unreliable. Jesus, Libras can be so fucking unreliable. <gasps> you know, but a Taurus definitely trust or a Virgo and a Cancer. They trust those people. They, they these are the type of people that will get you, even if you kind of add, ended on bad terms with them or whatever. Like these people are definitely here for you. You just may 
you may hear about it after, especially with a cancer. They may be like, oh yeah, please pick me up some groceries. And then like, while they say that, and they say you're reluctant, they may make you feel like, oh, don't get reluctant now. Remember when I helped you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, I want that back. You know, Venus and Tauruses are the same. Cause if they give, like, just like Leo's, if they give love, they want that shit back, you know? But sometimes they may get like the minimum or they may attract people that like also take, 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 take. And then give the bare minimum. Like the bare fucking minimum. But just because Venus and Taurus is they always get fixated on people. And then that results into loyalty. You know. It's kind of like they. In their heads. It's imprinted for them to kind of have no other choice. But to see a situation through. And just stick with a person or a job. Whatever. Just because they've planted seeds there. So now they have to see it grow. All the way even when they hate it but they need to learn f from Aquarius is that sometimes it's cool to ditch things if you don't fuck with it anymore if you don't like something just leave it you know it may be it's like icky sometimes but you have to you know because I feel like Venus and Tauruses they may they may also be the type of people like they may have had friends from primary or high school that they also may have had like really bad breakups with or ex-girlfriends and boyfriends that they may have had really bad breakups with. And then after a while, it's always going to be that thing of they're always going to want to reach out and like connect back to that relationship that they had. Just because there's foundations, you know, there was roots. You guys did things. You guys have been through things together. So they may not like ending those relationships too. Because it's like, wow, you were once mine. So technically you're still mine, but you're not really mine. So I want you to be mine. Just be mine again. You know, those vibes. Um, but yeah, guys, Venus and Taurus is super cool people. Um, they just, they, they, they may be very, like, they may, because they're stubborn, obviously, they really may not consider outside opinions at all. And it's going to take them a really, really long time to obviously change their minds or whatever. But, you know, for the most part, like, I guess they're cool. Pros, super chill very simple people, you know, have simple lifestyles, their love life, I mean, their love language is, like, just giving you things and tending to the, you know, physical body needs and wants, um, love art, have really good voices, speaking voices, especially the men, like, they have really good pillow talk voices, like, these are the type of guys that would, like, make you fall asleep, you know, even the ladies, just like Pisces and Venus in Mercury, I mean, v Libra, Merc, ha, Taurus, fuck, Mercury in Taurus, Mercury in Libra, Mercury in Pisces people have really good voices, especially when you sleep, like, these are definitely the people that would just, like, talk while you guys are about to sleep, and they just make you fall asleep, you know, have really good singing voices, um, they're really just usually into, like, playing an instrument, if not, they're, like, painters, I know that they're into painting. They may just overindulge, especially if like they have planets conjunct. If they have like their Venus and Taurus conjuncting their Jupiter, they can share Pisces energies where they just overindulge in everything, and everything kind of becomes a drug. But it's like even more hectic for Venus and Taurus because they get fixated on things, and it's like a lot more difficult to get out of that situation. Kind of like Pisces, because Pisces will form an emotional bond with that, you know, and kind of like not have a realistic outlook on things but Venus and Tauruses they'll just get super fixated on their pleasures and kind of not know when the line is where the line is between really overly appreciating something or just like overly indulging in something and then this is where you know you get like Tauruses with diabetes or heart problems or fucking just mental I mean physical body problems because they don't know when the fuck to stop you know stop eating just because it's so good or stop smoking because it's a habit or stop drinking Stop smoking weed. Stop sleeping. Or fucking, you know, just stop. They, it may be difficult for them to stop just because, like, that line can be blurred. And they can literally just be so situated and so comfortable, super comfortable in a situation. Which is also, just take that and take that, apply it to everything in life. Every single aspect in life. Just apply it to that, you know. Um, yeah. These guys are super cool lovers, though. Really sweet. This may be really dry. They also could be really rude, you know. They may not be good texters also. They may ignore you for a little while because in their heads they think, 
oh no, like we've already established a relationship, so there's no need to talk about how much we love each other every day, you know? So, because the Adventist and Taurus is always going to think like, now, if we do it every day, then we're just kind of going to lose, I know, the the specialty of it. Which is weird also because they overindulge in things, but I think they know when to not do things. Because I feel like if you're going to be in a relationship with them, it's going to be better if you live with them or you like live in close proximity and you can see them often. But if it's like a long distance thing, then it may be difficult because it's like, damn telling each other telling unless they have like gemini placements or libra or aquarius placements in their big three you know or their mercury or their mars also ascendant you know it's gonna be like oh my god we don't always have to tell each other we love each other like we get it you know or show me just like post me on instagram show me you love me or something like that i don't i don't know it's gonna depend on the other aspects but yeah for the most part um that's my venus in taurus video I hope you like this video please make sure to like share and subscribe and in my next video i will talk about venus in taurus through the 12 astrological houses of life because it's gonna differ with the houses um but yeah once again thank you so much to all my new subscribers and i'll see you in my next video